Hey what's up creators today, we're going to be showing you how we can take our AI to the next level by showing you how we can create a health bar which floats above the character's head. What we're also going to be doing is showing you how we can set up a very simple damage system so when you walk near that character you are going to be able to see that that health is going to go down. Now you can implement this into your own AI if you've created them already but what you are going to be able to take away from this video is you are going to have an understanding of all of the functionality, how we can drive this with a custom event, and how we can use this for our own characters. Let's hop into Unreal Engine 5 and get started. Okay, so now that we're inside of Unreal Engine, the very first thing that I'm going to do is build a AI test dummy. We can do this by right clicking and creating a new blueprint class of the type character. This is just going to give us a very basic AI that we can use with movement. Now I'm simply going to give this the name BP underscore AI test dummy. Once I've done this, I can double click on this to open it up. Once we've loaded inside of here, feel free to press open blueprint editor if you have that option. But inside of here, we can see all of our comp mesh, the capsule, and the arrow to point in the right direction. Now for this dummy, we just need to put something into the mesh here so we can actually see something. That being said, in the details panel on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and set this to our skm underscore mani. Then we're going to move him down to the floor and rotate him so he's facing the direction of the arrow. Now with this, if I go ahead and compile and save, I now have a AI test dummy I can place in my scene. If I go ahead and press play, we can see this character, we can run around him. He's not currently doing the animations, so I'm simply going to open up this blueprint again, and then inside of here in my mesh, in the details panel on the right hand side, I'm going to tell it to use animation mode, use animation asset, and tell it to use the idle animation. Once we've done that, we're good to go. Feel free to use the male or female version of the animation with different postures. Press compile, save, and play. We now have our test dummy. So now that we have our AI test dummy, we can actually start setting up the user interface widget, which is going to contain the graphical information and the code for actually displaying the health bar above that enemy's head. Let's do that. To do this, in the content browser, what we're going to do is right click and create a user interface widget blueprint. Like I said, this is going to contain all of the graphical and code information for any user interface in Unreal. Create that, use the user interface widget type, and I'm just going to go ahead and simply give this the name WB underscore and then AI health bar. Double click on this to open it up. We now have our UMG interface. For those that aren't familiar, that's UMG, Unreal Motion Graphics. We have our graph where we can start building all the graphical information here. Then we have the event side under graph where we can start building all of the code. So design view, graph view, graph view is for code, design view is for our design. Now for us to be able to start plotting any design stuff on here, what I need is a canvas panel. I can add one of these by going up to the palette in the top left hand corner, search for canvas, and I can find canvas panel, and drag and drop. This then gives us a canvas for adding in various different components. With that, I'm going to go ahead and add in the only component that I need for this health bar, which is a progress bar. So drag and drop and place one of these in. Now, what I would recommend you do is make sure you're placing this in the center. And then for your anchor point for your progress bar, what I want you to do is just anchor this to the top middle. Zoom in and just make sure it's perfectly centered. Once we've done that with this bar, we can just make this nice and thin so it looks the size of a AI health bar. Perfect. With this progress bar, for those of you that haven't used them, really straightforward. We have the percent value here, 
which I can increase or decrease to show percentage of progress, or in our case, health. I also have fill color and opacity that I can edit. And with this, I can go ahead and press OK, and I can change this to a different color. For me, I just changed that to a nice red to represent our health. Once we've done this, we're now gonna take a look at the code side of this. So within this widget blueprint that we've just created, so we've got the graphical information. Now we need to find a way to actually tie this percentage to a variable. Again, really straightforward, and we can do this using a simple binding. To set this binding up, what I'm gonna do is simply select this user interface component, the progress bar, scroll down, find our percent, and where it says bind, we're gonna left click on this and press create binding. From here, what we're gonna do is simply create ourselves a variable over here, and I'm gonna call it health. A variable just being data. The type of data that I need is a float, as that's a number. And I'm simply going to be binding this, so get a reference to health and simply putting that into our return input. Now I've done that, what's gonna happen is this bar is now always going to show the value of that variable. And all I need to do for my code for my AI later on is simply just tell it to update that single variable that we have there. Okay, so now we have our variable and we also have our progress bar showing the health variable. What we need to do now is actually show you how we can render this in 3D space above the player's head. We're gonna be doing this inside of the third person character blueprint. And then we just need to create some code which is going to tie the health variable within the character to the one in that health bar. So let's start off with projecting that. So now we have our widget blueprint. Back within your content browser, open up your test dummy blueprint. Open up the full blueprint editor. Inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding in a new component, which is going to be placed just above the player's head, just around here. To do that, go up to components in the top left, search for widget, and create a widget component. And we're gonna give this a name, health bar. Now, we've added that widget and I can place it just above the player's head, but we've not actually told it which widget to display yet. To do that, in the details with our health bar selected, we can go to widget class and choose health bar. And now, if I go back a little bit, you can see we've got our health bar here. Now, with this, I can move this down and we can place this just above the player's head, just like this. Move it forwards, compile, save and play. If we go around to the front, we can see the health. If we go around to the back though, we can't actually see anything. Now for us to make sure that this is displayed on the screen at all times, what I need to do is within here, instead of this widget being in world space, I need to change it to screen space. And we're not gonna see it in here because we're not actually playing the game. So we're never actually going to be able to see this until we play. For us to preview what that's going to look like, compile and save, press play, you can see we've now got that. And it's, it's very loosely above that. Now, if we're changing this to screen space, one thing that we need to do is make sure that our widget component is directly above the head where we want this to place it. Then in our health bar, like I've just done now, just make sure you move the health bar down from the top all the way to the center. And we can tell it's the center by setting the anchor to the center, just like that. Go ahead and hit compile, save and play. You can see now we have our health bar rotating and following and always being above the player's head. So at this point, we now have our health bar above the player's head and might I add, it's looking fantastic. But what we don't have is any information to say, this is what the value for that health should be. And that's where we now need to create a function which is going to update that. And whenever we're doing any kind of damage stuff later on, we simply just call that function. So let's, let's go ahead and make that function. To make the function, 
What we're going to do is a little bit of blueprint code inside of our character. Double click on this to open it up. First of all, add in a variable called health in our character with the type float. This is where we're actually going to be having our player's health. And with that, this is the variable that we're going to be taking and our function that we're going to be creating is just going to take that information and pass it over to the health bar. To do this, we're going to go into the event graph now and we're going to create a function called update health bar. And then go ahead and hit compile and save. Okay, so what we're going to do now inside of our update health bar function that we've created, we're going to be communicating to that health bar and getting the health value and setting it. To do this, get a reference to health bar. Then from here, what we're going to do is ask it, hey, what is the widget that you're using? For me, we can do that by using get user widget object. Then with that, what I can do is I can continue to cast to that widget now and we can start adjusting the properties. So cast to wb underscore ai health bar, which we already created earlier. And hook this up to our function start. Now what we can do with this cast node is we can actually get reference to the variables within this. So I can do get health. Or I can even do get or set health. And that's essentially what we're doing here with this function. It's just making sure the character's variable for health matches the one on the health bar. So what I'm going to do is simply set our health within our widget blueprint AI health bar equal to the value of health within our character. That being said, we join it up just like this. So what our function does, just to clarify, it says get a reference to the health bar, find out which widget it's using, and then cast to it so we can access the information. Then with this, we're setting the value of health within our health bar equal to the health within our character. Once we've done that, just for good measure, we're then going to add in a return node by right clicking and searching for add return node. Once we've done that, what we're going to do is go ahead and compile and save. What's also good for us to do is just to make sure that we run this update health bar function as soon as this character spawns, so they're both on the same point. So now if we go ahead and hit compile and set our health within our character to 50 and press compile and save, you're going to see it's at 50%. If I set this to 75 and hit compile and save, you can see now it's at 75%. And I can do that to any value that we like. I'm just going to set this to 100 for now and compile and save that. Press play one last time and we are good to go. Okay, now that we've got that set up, we can actually start taking a look now at how we can apply damage and get that damage function to actually use that health bar update function that we created so we can see that health coming down. But for now though, we've got the majority of everything that we need for our health bar to get working. So what we're going to do then is we're essentially going to have a big sphere surrounding the character or the AI. And if the player walks near it, we're just going to deal some damage and make sure that we update this. Now, in terms of the way that this AI takes damage, you can build that any way that you like. But for now, this is what we're going to do. And you're going to see just how simple it is to call that function and make it update. Okay, now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and set this up. So go to our test dummy. Inside of here, within our viewport, we're going to add in a new component called Sphere Collision. And with this, we're going to set the scale to 10, 10, and 10. So now we have a big sphere around the AI. And like I said, when the player runs along and enters that sphere, or begins overlapping the sphere, we're just going to tell it to take some health away. To set this up with our sphere, we're simply going to go in on component begin overlap. And as long as the character is cast to third person character, what we're going to do is simply say, hey, set the health of this AI here 
to the current value, so get a reference to the current value, and subtract 10 from that, and then we're going to set the new value. And what you should end up with is something that looks like this. Really straightforward, but here, when a third person character begins overlapping with this, it's going to reduce the health just like that. Now, just for good measure, what we do want to do after we've casted to this, we just want to make sure that this is valid. So it only does this if it's a valid first person character that does this. So add in the is valid node, use execute, use is valid and hook it up. Because if it's not the third person character, we just want it to do nothing. Go ahead and hit compile. And then just to make sure the health bar is the same, what we're going to do is after we've taken the damage, we just update that health bar. Go ahead and hit compile, save and play. Now, if we walk in, you can see the health goes down and I can keep walking into that sphere and keep taking away that damage. If you have a gun or anything like that, all you need to do is when that bullet hits, just call that function and it really is as simple as that. One last thing that I do want to note back within our update health bar is just make sure that we're using the is valid node as well, just to make sure we don't get any errors or we don't get anything that breaks. So as widget blueprint AI health bar, check to see if that's valid before we set this and just join it up to the, the set and is valid there. Compile, save, press play. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press F11 to go full screen and I can test. It. So now if I walk up to the enemy, you can see the health goes down. So at this point, we should now have our AI set up. And with that, we're actually able to damage it. But most importantly, we're actually able to see that health bar coming down as we continue to damage it. You can link this into your damage system, into your game, any way that you like. That being said, I'd love to hear about what you're going to be creating with this in the comments down below. So do be sure to reach out. Also, if you'd like a little bit more support on creating your game, or you have any Unreal Engine questions, or you just want to network with like-minded Unreal Engine developers, again, be sure to check out our Discord, the links for which are in the description down below. That's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus signing out.